So I admit, the sermon title, Raising Kids in 2021, may suggest that I am about to launch into a how-to discourse for the parents among us, as in, okay, good news, I know how to do this, all you need to do to raise kids is X, Y, and Z, got it? Well, instead, I stand you and before you as a parent of a young adult, and I still have plenty of questions about how to raise my kid, not to mention a whole bunch of thoughts about what I wish I had done differently. Which is to say, I am not an expert on raising kids, not now in 2021, and certainly not in 1997 when my son was born. And yet, it was my very ignorance that gave birth to the idea of this sermon. I really don't know what it's like to raise kids in 2021. Some of you do. Some of you are actively raising your kids, helping regularly with your grandkids, or working as a teacher. To suggest the challenges of raising kids grew during the pandemic is a laughable understatement. Even those of us without young kids understand that. After decades of articles, discussions, and aspirations of a work-life balance, the measurement scale imploded as workplaces, daycares, and school buildings closed. The metaphor of trying to balance distinct items falls apart when all the pieces in one life, one's life end up in a pile at a single address called home. Or so I imagine. As I said earlier, I don't have that personal experience of how hard it has been to parent kids who must be masked, distanced, and separated from their peers. I don't know what it's like to have to tell your child no to their dream birthday party idea because it's at an indoor gym where the protocols do not allow them to eat cake or pizza, or they do, and that doesn't really feel safe. Thinking about all I do not really know about raising kids in 2021, I went in search of a recently published parenting book to help illuminate the concerns and questions of today's parents. What I found was a book by journalist and mom, Melinda Wenner Moyer. Admittedly, the book title jumped out at me, How to Raise Kids Who Aren't Jerks, Science-Based Strategies for Better Parenting from Tots to Teens. I should confess, that the actual title has a stronger word <laughs> than jerks that I couldn't quite bring myself to say in a sermon. You can Google it, and apologies to the author for not being as brave as she. Now, a title like that has some strong appeal for a UU sermon on parenting. We have values of kindness, and we definitely like science. And the book is deeply researched by a journalist who also, as a mom, had a chance to put what she read into action. At the book's beginning and at the end, she's quick to admit her own parenting fails. But she also compellingly argues that by implementing what she learns, she begins to notice changes in herself and in her kids. For example, instead of running away from his little sister at the bus stop, her formerly indifferent son notices her struggle to get on her bike and helps her. <laughs> while, being a perfect, while being a perfect parent remains out of reach for all of us, is it possible that we could become better parents or grandparents? Is it possible that all of us adults might be able to better support the kids in our midst and the hard work of their parents? Is it possible we could all help raise kids who are kind? I feel like I'm on emotionally thin ice. 
parenting in whatever form it may take, often leaves us feeling vulnerable. Our connections with kids can be deeply rooted, our hopes for them and for our relationships with them so electric. Our confidence in our parenting can too easily be eroded by messages from without and within that tell us how we failed, how we need to do better, and how we should be better. And so in suggesting the possibility of becoming better parents, it is not my intention to launch anyone onto that thin ice of emotional self-judgment. Rather, my hope is to share a promising path of strategies that might just help you and your kids, not to mention a wider world that would benefit from a lot fewer jerks walking around. While it's impossible to summarize an entire book in a sermon, I will crib from Wenner Moyer's epilogue in which she writes, but if I had to whittle my advice down to one sentence, it would be this. Try to show compassion and make connections. When your kids are pushing your buttons, think about what they are experiencing. Think about the book that we heard for Time for All the Ages about all the emotions the little girl was holding. Think about what they may not understand about others in the world and how the lack of that understanding may be shaping their choices. Then think of the ways to fill in those blanks, to connect them and their actions to other people in the world at large. How you fill in those blanks will depend largely on your kids, the situation you're facing, and on your own values. Show compassion, make connections, fill in the blanks. Showing compassion calls for us to imagine what a child is experiencing. Why does it matter for a child to hold that toy or to be given the red rather than the blue bowl? Do we just roll our eyes and grab the toy or dismiss the children's concern as unimportant? Yeah, maybe we do sometimes. But maybe we could possibly catch ourselves and instead find a foothold to begin imagining why for this kid, in this moment, this thing matters so much to them. Can we have compassion for the experience of children? Of course, a large part of the experience of children is just that. They are children. They not only lack volumes of knowledge about how the wor world works practically, politically, and interpersonally, they also lack brain skills to be able to learn certain things at different ages. And they lack a fully developed prefrontal cortex to help them regulate the emotional storms churning in their amygdala. Perhaps if we can keep in mind the context of kids' experience and their capacities, we might find more space of compassion for how they engage in and react to the world. And possibly, we can also help children fill in the gaps of their missing knowledge. Perhaps we might help them learn to make the connections they need to learn not only about intellectual knowledge, but also about connections between one's actions and the emotional impact that has on another. Like how your sister feels when you ditch her and leave her alone at the bus stop. Wenner Moyer explores this idea of making connections in much greater idea details in her book, and I do have a copy if any parents want to borrow it. While she covers a range of topics, I was most struck by her chapters on gender and race. In both situations, she describes how kids are like little detectives, noticing differences and making inferences about their meaning. In other words, they make up their own connections if we do not do it for them. With gender, she points out how often we refer to people by their gender. Although there are many differences of eye color, height, weight, she says, quote, 
Which of these do we communicate almost all of the time when we speak about other people? Every time we use he or she pronouns, we indirectly indicate gender, but we don't indicate any of these other details." End quote. Beyond language, gender also shows up in toys, clothes, how we line kids up, how they go to the bathroom, and more. Winter Moyer argues that the danger of these gendered groupings lies in how they create stereotypes, which themselves begin to reinforce perceptions of gendered hierarchies. And kids who reject gendered binaries or the gender assigned to them at birth also face great danger and violence for not falling in line with those stereotypes. To help counter the creation of strong gendered stereotypes, Wenna Moyer suggests watching our language. For example, by using non-gendered person language, as in, did you see that person over there? Wenna Moyer also encourages cross-gender friendships and interactions, as well as paying attention to how we reinforce gendered stereotypes in our own words and actions. Finally, she suggests that we can talk openly and directly about gender discrimination, its history and its presence in the books, films, and people kids encounter. It's critical, <coughs> it's critical for parents to talk really talk about what your kids may already be noticing in the world about who does what and how gender or race plays a role in this. Kids, she again insists, notice things. Like all the teachers are women or all the chemists are male. But if we don't talk to them about dynamics like gender discrimination, they will infer their own conclusions, such as inherent biological differences or capacities of what jobs men do and what jobs women do. Likewise, Wenner Moyer speaks forcibly against colorblind parenting. To not speak of racial differences so that your child will be taught not to see color is simply wishful thinking. They notice differences of skin color. And when adults shy away from talking about these differences, they notice these, these particular differences are a big deal. Once again, kids will make their own inferences in the absence of adults filling in the blanks and making the connections for them about the signs of melatonin in the skin as well as the legacy of racism in our country creating some of, a lot of what they see. And the inferences that kids make on their own often lead to racially biased judgments. The examples she gives in the book are hair-raising, especially for white parents who assume, well, their kids are not racist or do not make racist statements. In reading this book, I feel like I did learn something about raising kids in 2021. I learned about how important it is to talk, really talk, with our kids about how we understand the world and what values we hold to make sense of it. In all of this, I thought again and again of the promises we make as a congregation when we dedicate a child. While we respect the special role of parents, we also all commit to play a role in helping to raise the kids. And so parents, so many parents, including I know many of you who raised your kids in this congregation, so many parents come to religious community so that their kids might learn values that are shared by many adults. Parents come so that their values might be reinforced by these other adults, by rituals, and by opportunities to serve, to help, and to protest. And all of this, all of us are charged with raising kids in 2021. All of us 
have a role to play in showing kids compassion for who they are at two months or six or 12. All of us have a role to play in helping kids fill in the blanks about how the world works, including explaining how it works in ways that we think are wrong. Parenting is not easy. Not in 2021, 1991, or 1961. Perhaps together, we might all learn more about how to be better parents, grandparents, and adults, and the lives of the kids around us. I think it's possible. Do you?